Welcome back to the EA and Crypto channel. My name is Enrique. Thank you so much for watching. And we are seven subscribers away from 2000, the big 2000 number. So if you enjoyed today's content and you are not subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button. Uh, big thank you to Swapsicle for partnering up with our channel. If you're looking for decks to swap with, to farm with, to armor LPs with, go check them out. They're always having all sorts of contests and uh, giveaways and all sorts of cool stuff. Teams doxxed, a legal team is doxxed, and they are building towards being so much more than the deck. So go check them out. I think the only two things you can't do on Sobstacle is uh, to trade on leverage and to short crypto. So if you're looking to do those two things, go check out Big Get. My affiliate link is below the description. Great way to help out the channel. Um, and if you uh, click on the link and create an account with Big Get, you will get a bunch of cool awards or rewards, I guess I should say. All right, guys, so let's get into it. The big news, Luna Classic up six, as much as 60%. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, Binance, uh, like it's stated here, unveils a burn scheme that is favorable, that the uh, community seemed to like. It wasn't exactly what they got, what they wanted, but it's they, they did get something. Uh, but like it states here, uh, the token supply is hyperinflated and it's unlikely to have the desired effect that the traders hope for. So um, by some accounts, it could take up to about 11 years before, you know, the um, the burn mechanisms actually help out the price action. So, um, yeah, so it caused this to happen. And uh, look at that big old candle. Even on the four hour, it looks ridiculous. If you really want to see it look crazy, check out the one hour. Uh, well, yeah, then it'd be two candles. I mean, just look at that. So unbelievable stuff. But uh, the way I see it, it presents uh, may present opportunity to short. Um, so especially now that the kind of like the jig is up and a lot of people understand that it's not going to do the things that some people thought it would do back a few, what seems like not like months ago, but it was just like a couple of weeks ago and it did this craziness. Uh, but what I wanted to call out is the fact that if you look right here at the last local high, it was back in September 16th. So not that long ago, just 10 days ago, um, it was, you know, roughly about, um, around three, three, kind of like almost where it is now. Uh, so three zeros, three, three, and then it dropped all the way down here. So in about 10 days or really nine days from the 25th, it did drop almost, almost 50%. And here we are almost up here again. So you got to figure you'll see something similar in the next week to come. So I opened up a short on big cat. I just felt that it was a good spot to open up a short here at super low leverage. So I don't have to worry about if it runs again. Uh, worry about getting um, liquidated and uh, yeah we'll see how it plays out so we'll keep an eye on lunacy lunacy whatever you want to call it but i'm expecting more downside if we look at the four hour and we look at the volume okay so this is pretty important <clears throat> look at the volume it just keeps dropping and as the volume drops the price action will cause a decrease in the price so uh the price action will drop along with it so uh, I am expecting as long as we see that volume keep dropping, we should be fine on our short. So that is one thing to monitor. BTC um, just kind of hanging out today up about, what, 2%. I was surprised. I thought it would have a poor day. Uh, and it's uh, it feels like something big could be happening. I mean, it's you're starting to see kind of it forming a bit here. Um, yeah, it's, gonna, it's I think we might see something soon here with Bitcoin. We'll see. I don't know. I'm just kind of messing around real quick. But it would not surprise me to see something big with Bitcoin in the next. This is on the daily. So in the next couple of days to, to come, we'll see. I'm just, I didn't draw that very well, but would not surprise me to see it make a big move up or down uh, in the days to come. But what's really interesting is with Ethereum, I opened up a short this weekend um, and I got punished for it. So I had to close it at a loss. Um, I was very surprised with Ethereum once it fell out of this channel. I thought that we would go test down here around 1220 again before it makes its push and it's making a push without it. So, um, you know, once it dropped out of this channel, um, it's kind of surprised me by doing this uh, like it has. It really has, especially with especially last night when the futures markets opened and they were down. It just seemed like a really good spot to short Ethereum, but things don't always work out. So I'm just noticing something while I'm talking that I didn't notice before. Hold on. Let me extend this. Wow. Okay, so that channel that it had gone out of, it's now acting as full-blown resistance. Not here, it did wick above it once. Here, hit it perfectly twice. And then here, 
tr almost tried a third time and here we go for a fourth time looks like it's primed to try again so wow that channel is acting as resistance so let's see what happens but it looks like it's primed for a fourth try it tries a fourth try you got to figure maybe then it'll get back into the channel and if it does get back into this channel ethereum's heading to 421 it just is it will be heading to 1421 so let's wait and see what happens the next time it touches its channel and if it gets in there establish itself even retest it yeah 1421 can definitely be uh a perfect spot to short interesting all right so 1421 is now in the radar for sure so huge possibility so let's see if it what happens with ethereum but that's really interesting uh xrp has really slowed down big time actually uh here we are in the four hour look at the positive momentum just wane wane the buyers have definitely gotten pretty damn tired uh, rsi also trending down yeah so um it has established itself pretty okay in the last 16 hours but um yeah indicators are showing that this could be done for now but we'll see i mean We'll see what happens here. Um, I can get rid of that now. Um, yeah, so interesting to see that XRP. Uh, but I, what, what I did want to state on XRP is that if, if it starts pushing up, uh, its next huge level of resistance is right here. Look at that. Uh, around right there. Yeah, this looks about right. Yeah, about 50 about 60 cents to about 58 cents so 58 cents to 60 cents is just huge level of resistance on the daily for xrp so remember that 58 cents to 60 cents so if you're long on it that would probably be a great time to take profits and then a uh, great time to open up a short maybe at 58 cents so i did want to call, cover that out uh eo is just basically doing what we thought would do it has formed a nice little um, it's forming a nice little uptrend right there. Uh, so we'll see how long that holds. But again, I'm still thinking that long-term or mid-term uh, EOs, I called it, 82 cents is where I think it's going. But yeah, I mean, it's not going to go up straight up, straight down, as you can see here, you know, down, up, down. I mean, so it's not going to be a straight, straight thing, but definitely expecting EOs um, after doing the, uh, after getting all the momentum, all the FOMO, all the craziness from its uh, move to, uh, to Antelope. Uh, I think now, you know, eventually 82 cents is where it will probably bottom out. Um, ETC, not a lot to cover here, really. It's just hanging out in the channel still. So we'll see what happens with ETC. Um, you know, I, I, I firmly believe that the higher goes here, the better if you're looking to short it, because eventually I think we're going to we're going to be far, far lower than we are now. Uh, the FOMO leading up to the merge with ETC was just ridiculous. And um yeah, a $12 ETC in time as the macro just keeps hammering down on it would not surprise me. So uh, just wanted to kind of look at some other ones as well. Uh, Magic Craft, let's reload this real quick. Hanging on pretty strong. Um, UFO is another one that I've been talking about that I ha I'm having my eye on. UFO, This is these are the types of assets that... Uh, you know, as we get close to the bottom or you think the bottom's now, you want to start accumulating these. This is an asset that is at, it's basically dropped almost 95%, 95% of its value. Um, so, and what I really like about it is look at that circulating supply. It's at max supply. So you don't have to worry about, you know, one of the, for example, if we look at an asset like, I don't know, Verocity, check this out. Look at its max supply versus total supply, 9%. Circulating supply for veracity is 9%. The sell pressure on that is sick. Look at the five, fully diluted market cap versus the market cap. I mean, Jesus. So that's why I like UFO so much. It's one of those assets that I think could go nutso in the next bull run um, because it's lost so many zeros. So here at its all-time high um, of uh, four zeros, four, five. Right now we're at one, two, three, four, five zeros, right? Or is it six? Yeah, it's five. So I want to see, so it's lost the five and it's at 199 versus four five, but we want to see it lose another zero um, as this uh, macro keeps hammering on it. And we lose another zero um, and it starts getting down to the to really low numbers. That's when you can have, you know, you can have some big, big numbers. I mean, you can, that's how you get those 50 X's and so on. So uh, keep an eye on assets like that, but you want to look at the circulating support supply you want to see how active they are as far as socials do a lot of people talk about them on twitter 
Uh, all that kind of stuff makes a difference. It really does. I know it's stupid. It's silly, but it's just the sad tru truth about uh, crypto. It's uh, marketing is important. It just it is what it is there. What else? BNB still kind of hanging strong around that 275 market. Things get really ugly. Again, I've talked about this on the show. The support, the next level support, if it doesn't hold 210, I think it's like 140. I think I have memorized and below that 40, which is just crazy. Solana, uh, one to keep an eye on. I'm not interested in Solana unless it gets down to 20. Uh, so that's another one that we're watching. Matic is one that I want to accumulate as much as I can. I think it's going to go crazy in the next bull run. So Matic. Um, I did hear the other day with, uh, what is it, At Cosmos Atom, that their supply is like limitless. That's like infinite. So I guess that's why there's no fully diluted market cap. Like I don't even, how do you even, yeah. So I thought that was pretty interesting. It makes me want to never own it, <laughs> but it sure is popular. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, a couple more things to note. Wine went on a very nice run. Good for you, Wine. It was down to like 10 bucks and uh, it is now at $15 and 39 cents. See, we can make this bigger. Did it even hit the $10 mark? Hit $11 and 33 cents. So nice run up by uh, Wine. Look at that big old candle there. So that was good to see. Was not expecting to see that. So very nice. I mean, sooner or later, you thought it would bounce. MDB is, uh, yeah, it's pulling back a little bit. It had to pull back, right? It wasn't going to go up forever without some pullback. So yeah, it'll, it'll, it's pulling back a little bit. We'll see um, when it stops pulling back. And again, with MDB, it's all about the, the long term there, the, what it's going to do in the bull run. We'll see. Uh, and some of the other assets in DeFi, just not really doing that much. Pebble's up 42%, up to $26. Okay, okay. That's a long way to go, but that's a good start. So yeah, so that's about it for today's um, video. And um, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.